In this video, we're going to break down the interface and go over how we can customize it to our liking. We're not going to spend too much time on what every option and tool does. We're going to explore those in detail throughout the course of the program. For now, we just want to break down the interface to its main components. So starting from the top left corner of the application, we have the main menu here. Here you're going to find nested every option and tool inside of Google Earth. Just below the main menu, there is the search section. There is a search field here where you can type an address or if you have coordinates that come in a format that Google Earth can read, you can put those in here. And when you click on search, Google Earth is going to navigate to that address. There are also two options here. One is called Get Directions and the other is called History. If you click on Get Directions, you're going to get two input fields, one for point A and one for point B. Let's say that under point A, I type a name of a city and then under point B, I'm going to type the name of another city. And when I click on Get Directions, Google Earth is going to create a path between the two points and is going to display that. We can also see the total distance of the path and how much time it's going to take to get from point A to point B, depending on the mode of transport that we have chosen. So at the moment I have a car chosen as the mode of transport, but let's say that I switch this to walking. So this is going to adjust the path. Now, if you click on history, it's simply going to list the history of searches that you have made. There is a plus button right next to each search entry. If you click on that, it's going to expand the entry and it's going to show the points that you have been searching for. The drop down arrow is going to expand the small menu. You have a few options here. The show balloon option is going to highlight the point and display a small pop up dialog. The fly here option is going to navigate to that point. You can also simply just double click on the point here from within the search results to navigate to it. You can also save the point to my places, which is this section right below the searching section. So Google Earth will retain the search entry to your places. And you can also copy the search entry to a KML file that you can then share with someone else. In the bottom left corner of the search entry, we have three buttons. The first button is simply going to do the same thing that the option from the drop down menu does, which is to save the entry to your places. The second button is going to be the equivalent command to the copy as KML command. And through the last button, you are going to be able to print out the search entry to a PDF or to connect to a printer so you can print it out on paper if you need to. If you want to hide the search results, you can press on the crosshair button to close those out. You can also collapse the entire search section just by clicking on the arrow here. You can also collapse the entire search section just by clicking on the drop down arrow next to the title here. Now below the search section, we have the places section. This is where all of the data that you import inside of Google Earth is going to be listed. So this is going to contain all of your files. Now, this places section is made up of two subsections. One is called my places and the other is called temporary places. Normally, when you first import data inside of Google Earth and it's placed under temporary places, when you try to close out the application, it's going to ask you if you want to save any files that are under temporary places to my places so that you can retain them. You can also just manually move any files that you have under temporary places. So for example, if I have a folder here, I can simply left click, hold and drag on it and then drag it under my places. So now if I close out the application, this folder is going to be retained. Otherwise it would have been deleted. We're going to go into a lot more detail on how to use the places section in other videos. At the bottom of the places section, you have a few buttons. The first one with the spyglass is simply going to allow you to search for anything that you have within the places section. You don't actually have to press this button to activate it. You can go straight to the search field here, left click on it, and then you can type into it. There is also a shortcut that will allow you to do the same thing. So you don't actually have to click there. Your mouse can be anywhere else on the screen and you just have to press control plus F on the keyboard or command plus F on a Mac. So if I press control plus F, now you can see that I can type in the search field. Let's say that I type the name of one of our projects here and you can see that it's going to find it in my places. 
The up and down arrows are going to allow you to search through the entries. So it's going to find previous and next entry. Now the button next to the spyglass will allow you to adjust the transparency or the opacity of anything that you have selected under the places section. So let's say that we have an image imported inside of the application. If I want to quickly adjust its opacity, I can click on this button and there is going to be this slider widget that I can adjust to my liking. If I move it all the way to the left, the image is going to be fully transparent, so we're not going to see it. There is also another way to adjust the opacity of anything inside of Google Earth, and that is by simply right-clicking on any element that you have imported and going under properties. And then you're going to see this transparency slider here that you can adjust the opacity from. This is it for the basic overview of the places section. Now, right underneath, we have the layer section. Here, you're going to find different data overlays that you can display inside of Google Earth. Now, the primary database that is imported here by default is not something that you can change. You can neither add anything here nor remove anything. This is just the database that comes with Google Earth by default. Feel free to explore what all of the layers here do. For example, you can display photos that people have shared with the Google Earth community. So when I enable the photos layer, you can see that now these small circles appear. And if I click on them, photos are going to be displayed here with some description. Some of these layers are denoted as outdated. This is because they are scheduled for removal or some of them are going to be merged together under one layer. And this is probably going to happen in one of the next versions of Google Earth. Now, probably the most important layer that you have here is the terrain layer. This is what enables the 3D terrain inside of Google Earth. So if I just zoom into this area here, we can see that at the moment, the 3D terrain is enabled. You will also note that in the bottom right corner of Google Earth, there is this elevation. You can also notice that in the bottom right corner of Google Earth, there is this elevation indicator, which shows the elevation of the terrain at the point where my mouse cursor is currently. If you were to uncheck the terrain layer, you're going to get a ORF view of the map and the elevation indicator is always going to show zero. Now, the exaggeration of the terrain layer is controlled from within the options, as we already covered under the settings video. So if I go under the tools menu and go under options and under 3D view, we have here the elevation exaggeration factor. By default, this factor is set to one, which supposedly gives you the most realistic representation of the terrain based on the elevation data that Google Earth uses, which is arguably not a very high resolution data, but still it is enough for visualization purposes. If you want to exaggerate the terrain, simply bump up this factor. Let's say that we want to set the maximum of three, and then I'm going to click apply. And now I can see that the terrain was greatly exaggerated. I'm going to bring that back down to one and click on apply. Now in the very center, we have the actual viewport where you're going to be able to preview anything inside of Google Earth. In the bottom right corner of the viewport, you can see that we have this mini map, which shows where you are right now in the world. If you want to get rid of this mini map, then simply go under the view menu and uncheck the overview map. If you want to have a scale bar showed inside of the viewport, you can enable that again from the view menu just by clicking on scale legend. Now, by the way, if the Google Earth logo in the bottom right corner is troubling you for being so big or it's just getting in the way, there is a trick you can use to hide it. And that is by going to the save image options. You can find those by clicking on this button in the far right of the top menu. I'm going to click on that. And then under the map options drop down menu, there is this scaling field. If you reduce the scale from 100 to, let's say, 0 or 1, then the map elements that we have in the viewport are going to be so small that they are practically invisible. But this is also going to apply the scaling to any other viewport element, not just the logo, but also the compass and the scale. For now, I'm going to bring the scaling back to 100. We're going to cover all of these options in another video. In the top right corner of the viewport, we have the compass and all of the navigation widgets. There is also this icon of a person. This is just the Google Street View. If you left click on that, hold and drag it in the viewport, you can drop it on any of these highlighted paths and it's going to navigate there and give you the Google Street View of that area. 
If you want to exit from Street View, you can just click on the Exit Street View button. If you want to hide the compass and the navigation widgets, you can do that from the View menu. So I'm going to go under the View menu and under Show Navigation. By default, this will be set to Automatically, but you can set it to Never, and it's going to hide all of these widgets. Normally, I want to have at least the compass. I don't need the navigation widgets because I'm just going to use my mouse and keyboard for that. At the very bottom of the viewport, we have the status bar strip. This is going to show us the imagery date for the satellite imagery that we're currently looking at. It's also going to show us the coordinates of our mouse cursor. Now, these are relative to the coordinates reference system that you've set for Google Earth to use. So if I go under the tools and then under options, and I change this from UTM to decimal degrees, for example, and I click on apply, we can see that the coordinates are going to change to latitude and longitude. We also have here the elevation indicator that we already mentioned, and we also have an indicator for the altitude of our camera. So if I were to zoom in, we can see that the altitude indicator is going to reflect that. In the far left corner of the status bar, we have an indicator of how far back the historical imagery goes. If I click on that, it's going to switch to the historical imagery as far back as it can go. And the historical imagery slider is also going to appear in the top left corner. Now, this is it for the viewport. Right above the viewport, there is a small menu that contains the most commonly used commands and tools inside of Google Earth. The very first button to the far left is going to collapse all of the menus that we have here, such as the search places and layers. So if you want to get rid of those, you can simply click on that. Only the search field is going to be retained. So if you need to navigate to some address quickly, you can do that still. This is great if you need to capture, let's say, a screenshot and you don't want all of the menus to be in the way. Right next to that command is the add place mark, which is essentially the tool for adding points inside of Google Earth. We're going to explore those in depth in other videos. We also have the Add Polygon tool, which allows you to draw polygonal shapes. Then we have the Add Path tool, which allows you to draw lines and polylines. Then we have the Add Image Overlay tool, which will allow you to import and overlay images. Then there is the Record a Tour tool. This will allow you to record small videos inside of Google Earth that you can share with other people. There is a separate movie making tool inside of Google Earth. This is under the Tools menu under Movie Maker. So this is separate from the Record a Tour tool. We're going to take a look at both of them. Then there is the Historical Imagery option here. If I click on that, we're going to get that same slider that we already looked at. This is going to show you all of the historical imageries available for the area that you're currently looking at. Next to the historical imagery tool, there is the time of day tool. If I click on that, it's going to allow us to preview how the position of the sun affects our current area. This tool works best if you zoom out a little bit and I can zoom all the way back. And now if I move the slider, we can see how the position of the sun is affecting the globe. Google Earth also has visualizations for the sky, Mars, and the moon. So if you're interested in exploring those, you can do that from this drop-down menu. Right next to those is the ruler tool. Next to the ruler tool, we have a button that is going to allow us to send data over email. Next to the email button, we have the option to print out our map. Now we can print to paper or just to PDF if we want to. We're going to cover the printing options in another video. Next to the print button, we have the save image options. We already looked at those briefly and we're going to cover them in a lot more depth in their own video. Next to the save image options, we have a button for sending our current view to Google Maps. So if I were to click on that, a new browser window will be loaded and Google Maps will open up and navigate to the same view that I currently have in Google Earth. And lastly, we have the option of sending our current view to the web-based version of Google Earth. So this is different from Google Maps. It's just a basic version of Google Earth, but in a browser form. Now we can briefly cover customizing the interface. Google Earth does not have great customization capability, but you can make the viewport clearer if you want to. Well, we already covered how you can possibly hide the Google Earth logo in the bottom right corner and how you can hide the compass and navigation widgets if you want to. 
You can also hide the scale bar in the bottom left corner if you don't need it, just by going under the view menu and unchecking the scale legend. You can hide also the coordinate grid that is being displayed just by pressing Ctrl or Command plus L or going under the view menu and unchecking the grid. Similarly, you can hide also the status bar just by going under the view menu and unchecking the status bar. You can resize the side menus just by moving your cursor at the edge of the menus, left clicking, holding and dragging. You can also resize the menus up and down just by moving your cursor in between two of the menus and then left clicking, holding and dragging. Normally when I work, I hide the entire layers panel and I also hide the entire search panel just by clicking on the arrows next to the titles. So I'm only going to be left with the places panel because this is going to contain all of the data that I work with inside of the application. So I just want to see as much of it as possible. And so this just about wraps it up for the interface breakdown and the customization. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was useful and I'm looking forward to share more with you in the next sessions.